uh, I'm just going to read uh, something from uh, Pete in his own words to introduce him. Pete says, my desire to capture the perfect frame can be triggered by something as simple as a fleeting facial expression, a tear on a child's face, a curious shadow on a wall, or the way beams of light playfully bounce off the surface of the ocean. Any visceral force that pours into my iris and stamps a mark into my mind. I've never used a light meter. I simply understand what light is doing. When it comes to projects, I'd like to think the sincerity of my energy and passion is contagious. And I believe that I've got a knack for making my subjects feel relaxed and comfortable. My natural, authentic feeling photographs illustrate the charisma, behavior, and narratives of people in their own environments. I've met some amazing characters through my projects, and that fact, uh, and, and the fact that I've been allowed to step into their worlds has made me feel privileged. So welcome, Pete. So good evening, everybody. At school, I was told I was uh, good at art, and um, I was quite happy to uh, believe them. So uh, I decided to go to Kingston Art School to, to study design and illustration. I think one of the reasons I uh, went to Kingston was apparently Eric Clapton had spent some time there, and I thought it might rub off, because uh, I still am pretty obsessed with the guitar. So that's why I ended up going there. And uh, when I left, I, uh, I became an illustrator and uh, set up my own sort of uh, little business. Uh, working mainly in the sort of advertising and editorial field. Uh, I think one of my more regular fun jobs was uh, working for Roger Watt at uh, Men Only. And uh, he would uh, often uh, give me uh, a story to illustrate, uh, which uh, usually uh, to help the, uh, speed up the process of doing illustration, I would uh, get my girlfriend at the time to uh, dress up in some sort of uh, interesting attire, and I would take snaps as uh, just reference shots to, uh, to help the process along and speed things up. But using this uh, technique, I um, came unstuck one day by shooting uh, some reference material with a wide-angle lens. And uh, I was doing a book cover for Penguin Books, and uh, I uh, had the, uh, the job rejected. And my agent uh, called me in and took me to the uh, French house in Soho and uh, bought me a drink and sat me down and uh, said, uh, you, couldn't, you can't draw. So um, it, it actually it was it was it was as part from the fact that I was a bit pissed off at the time, but I did have an extremely laborious style. I was working with sort of airbrush and uh, crayons, and it was I was actually trying to do photographs. Um, but that sort of sent me sort of looking for a new direction, and then by chance, uh, my uh, long-suffering girlfriend uh, through through her I, I met three photographers, uh, Jim, Paul, and Daniel, and uh, went along to see them and. Uh, I really liked what they were doing. I had my eyes open to all the skirmishes you can get up to as being a photographer and just loved it. So I suggested, can I come and work for you? I'll work for free. So Paul, um, having known, known Paul now, uh, he, he leapt at the chance and that's how I ended up uh, working as, a, as an assistant for about uh, two years. It was like an epiphany to me. It was like going back to uh, college uh, it's funny seeing Julia's pictures of uh, uh, Polaroids, and when I did exactly the same, you know, you'd, you'd snaffle them away and write up, you know, like F16, you know, tungsten light and, uh, you know, what you can do with filters, but all oh, that's really not necessary anymore, I suppose. Um, but it's good to know. Um, I set up my own studio in about uh, 1995, 96, and uh, I've been working sort of ever since, really. So here comes uh, the first... Uh, sort of series of pictures I like to uh, talk about. Uh, my <coughs> Here we go. Uh, Cornish Surfers. Uh, this is a sort of project I I'd always wanted to tackle, but I hadn't felt right about the approach, but uh, I had something sort of firmed, firmed up in my head, and uh, so I sort of about, thought about doing it. And uh, I've known these guys uh, and, and girls, some of them, uh, for you know, sometimes uh, quite, a, quite a long period of time, I've actually surfed with them. I might add, 
the, all of them are much better surfers than I am. I remember watching Dave in particular um, getting barreled at Harley when I was a kid and just being in absolutely in awe of him, one with the ocean and his board and his sport. It was, it was amazing. Um, so I, I set out, and actually, I'm going to go backwards, because I asked uh, Neil, this is a picture of Neil, to um, help with the uh, casting process, because uh, he's a local surfer, and he also has a, 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 a great um, sincerity in his approach to asking people, and I think it's really important right from the start of doing something that uh, you have a bond or a, a trust with people. I also had a hit list of people that I wanted to get. Um, Dave is... Uh, He's actually a very successful painter now, um, so I really wanted to get him um, and some of the others. I, I wanted these portraits to be simple and uncluttered and all about the person. And, and it was also vital to me that uh, I wasn't just having them standing just in a, in a space, photograph them. I wanted them to be, I wanted to shoot them when they actually had a, ser have a session. Uh, I was interested in just seeing how their bodies react to being in the ocean. Um, I wanted the pictures to be stark and almost brutal. I don't think a, a portrait necessarily has to make the person look good. I just wanted sort of like an honest uh, you know, approach. And I also wanted sharp detail. I wanted to see uh, the, the impression a wetsuit makes on the body and the tan lines and sort of like body histories. Um, so we shot on a high-res digital back more akin to shooting with a sort of 10.8 camera, so we get great detail. The shoot, when it uh, took place, we actually, we did a, I should mention, we did a, we had the luxury of doing a pre-light. Um, I thought about shooting on the beach, uh, but you know, that, that would have been pretty simple, but there were just too many variables, the wind and sun and no sun and stuff like that. So I approached a lady I know who's got probably one of the ultimate houses on the beach, and <coughs> she, she let us use her garage, so we cleared it out and turned it into a studio. We did a pre-light. I think we used about seven or eight different lights to get this desired look. And uh, the shoot was quite simple. I had a brief chat with everybody before they went into the, sort of, the studio space uh, to put them at ease. And um, I think what also helped uh, was that the actual studio space was quite dark. Um, so when they were in the this, this, this space, um, it, was, it was probably quite hard for them to uh, see me. It's probably a bit like me here. I could, I could see lights coming at me. So, it, it, you know, you are you start to look around naturally in the space to try and see things. So that was quite interesting. I, I had a, like a little pen light on them so I could see Fergus and, and watch them. And I was chatting them. And I was just sort of waiting for sort of off moments, maybe a shrug of a shoulder or a, a slight uh, reflection, a personal reflection. And, that, and that's how we we got these these portraits. I'll show you a few more. Not really good at knocking them along. This is Deb. She's, she's probably about uh, 70 now. But you can still find her at the back on big days surfing with all the, the good, good guys. And Jack, it's just, you, know, you can see it's this alabaster skin he has. And uh, the, the impression, maybe it's a birthmark. So it's just interesting. And the last one, Richard, he, he's a bit of a character and he has an incredible body. Um, no, it's great. The next uh, couple of images I would like to show you is, a, is basically a couple of portraits I did of um, my son, Jen, and uh, my, uh, my wife, Jen. Th this came about from a more of a, a sort of a lighting and focus test. It was sort of working in the opposite way of shooting the, uh, the Cornish surfers. You know, it was, it's basically using an extremely shallow depth of field. You can you can lose focus from the sort of distance to the from the iris to the eyelid. It's uh, it's uh, quite fun to do. Uh, it has its drawbacks. The, the the person has to be relatively still to uh, to, to you, you actually grab the focus. But having said that, it's uh, it's, it's it is an interesting. It's, you get a really nice impression of somebody. I I think it's almost like looking at somebody or meeting somebody for the first time. Your your eye sort of darts over the face and you're sort of evaluating mood and expression. This is Jen, who's uh, in the audience somewhere. I think it's also very important is when you're shooting this technique is not, not to let the subject um, see themselves, what they're getting, because I, I, I think it's, uh, it's quite off-putting. I, I think there's a whole series of images or mo moving image footage that you can capture when, when people see themselves for the first time. It's, it's, uh, it's good fun doing that. 
The next uh, couple of things I'd like to show you was uh, the lovely people at Wired called me and uh, asked me whether I'd be interested in shooting Lord Sugar. And uh, I had to say yes, I and mean, it's, uh, it's fantastic to be able to uh, photograph him and that face. Um, at the, at the, uh, the day of the shoot, uh, we, you know, we had a reasonable time, but I needed a reasonable time to set up because they wanted to look similar to the surfers. And uh, I think when we, we rocked up to these offices, just sort of Oxford Street, and discovered that he was already there, so I had a bit of a mild <coughs> panic. But fortunately, he, he busied himself and he came back at the allotted time. And uh, one of his aides, when he came into the, sort of, uh, the, the office, he said, we've got sort of two minutes with him. And uh, so what, what, we, what I said to him was, uh, OK, right, we're going to do f four portraits when it, in 30 seconds sort of breaks. And that's how we got these shots. Um, the first one I, I, I like the best uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's trying to capture an off moment with him. He's ex incredibly difficult, I think, to, um, to break down. It's, uh, it, I almost want to... Uh, when you're photographing something, like that, it's almost like uh, getting an egg and almost like cracking, cracking it to get to the gooey stuff inside. But I remember getting this frame off, and it was, it was using flash. And uh, I remember he shot me this look through the camera lens, and like I wasn't going to do that again because uh, you know he's very, he's uh, he's pretty. Uh, he, yes, he's hard to uh, photograph in a, a meaningful way or trying to crack, capture something. The next uh, character I shot for Wired was Brian Cox, and this is a very different experience. He was uh, far more giving of his time. Um, we were also shooting moving image of him as, as well, so it were, there were more people, and he, w he was actually interested in the whole process. So uh, that, that's those two. Uh, yeah, of course, the shot, I really like this shot at the back of his head. You know, he, Lord Sugar was no, it would no way let me do something like this. The uh, next series of images I'd like to share with you and uh, show you and talk about is uh, I, I was commissioned by McCann's to, uh, to shoot these portraits for a new cancer drug called Herbitux. And apparently uh, this drug can reduce the size or shrink some tumours. And uh, they wanted it in a, a similar style to the uh, shots of uh, Jen and Bart. But what really interests me about it is I could sort of move, move these... Uh, the portraits on from almost the sort of traditional sort of uh, subtle motion to try and capture um, images that uh, had more of an outpouring of emotion. Uh, so we, we started off by doing a, a pretty large casting to try and find the right ages and ethnicities and etc. But more importantly for me, it was uh, to try and find people who would naturally open up and be more giving um, in, front of the, in front of the camera, basically. Um, we, the whole idea of the shoot when we, we came to it was, you know, we're quite tight in, and uh, but the, the process was, uh, we, there was we sat them down and it's as if they were in the consultant's room in the hospital or wherever, and waiting for their results. And um, you know, I was trying to capture emotions like in, in trepidation and fear and helplessness and uh, hopefully joy. Uh, so I thought. Whilst, whilst I photographed them, it would be a good idea to have like a narrative voiceover to take the, the, the patients on a, on a journey through their emotions. And it also enabled me to sort of photograph different emotions as well. And uh, that, that's, that's what, what we got, I think. Um, some of the people we shot had no prior knowledge to being in front of a camera before. And I think that can be a really good thing. Um, I think the key to it is... Uh, is being very strict at the casting process, so you don't get into uh, uh, deep water. But uh, I think if you photograph people who are used to being in front of the camera a lot, whether they're actors or models, again, it's a bit, you know, I suppose it's like using the, uh, the idea of the, the egg. It's, it's, it's harder to break that down. It takes longer to th get through that uh, everyday facade. So, you know, I, I want to get in, into the real, uh, the real uh, emotion. Um, I was proud to receive an award of excellence from, for these series from the uh, Communication Arts. So this next series, uh, I suppose, is a bit different. Um, Bonneville. Well, this seems quite recent to me, because um, it's, uh, it's like a 
pierces itself back into my memory. Um, the whole idea of this was uh, hatched uh, working in New Zealand. I was there for a month shooting a, a, a job and uh, working with this amazing character called Muzza, uh, a bit of a scallywag, a real scoundrel, but uh, he... he um, he, I found out that uh, he, he'd been the online producer of the film The World's Fastest Indian, Indian about uh, Burt Munro and his Indian motorbike and his, him travel, you know, travelling from New Zealand to Bonneville. And I think Muzza gave me the film as a sort of a going away present, I suppose, and uh, watched it and uh, fell in love with the idea. And then a bit of a slack moment, um, I was Googling Bonneville Speed Week and it was about to happen. So I rang Jules, uh, my trusty assistant. I'm not sure whether he's actually managed to make it here tonight. Um, obviously not, because I can't hear him. Um, I said, do you fancy going to uh, Bonneville and uh, staying at a casino for a week or so? So it, before almost his answer, Jen had already booked the, booked the tickets and we were off. When we got there, I mean, nothing could have prepared us for the sort of visceral uh, onslaught of uh, Bonneville. Just driving off the tarmac, and onto the salt and listen to the American radio blowing. It was just the, it was the business. I remember rocking up to near the, the park, this near the start line of the park. And we just and we jumped out and started shooting. It was it was like a sweet shop. There were just uh, everything there, like cars, bikes, rocket cars, engines, you know, revving, and the, the smell of the smell of fuel. It was just Americana. It was just. It was, was the bollocks actually? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, that that evening, re just reviewing uh, the pictures, uh, I uh, I felt uh, I wasn't that happy with them. I think uh, they, they felt a bit um, messy, and uh, I think there are other photographers there shooting. And of course, I wanted to get something better than they did. So um, I, you know, I wanted to get up close and up close and personal with the with these uh, men and women who uh, are risking it all. And, uh, and I just I wanted the, to try and show the landscape as well that they're, they're, uh, they're, they're in, you know, and racing. I'm sorry, I'm going backwards. I'm not very good at PlayStation. My son always takes a piss out of me because I can't, it's not very good with my thumbs. Um, now, right, where was I? <laughs> uh, yeah, up close and personal. So the light there is, is, is incredible. So uh, after about sort of nine o'clock, ten, nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten, it's all over. It's just too bright to shoot. And uh, so, but we would hang out during the day and uh, have a bite to eat. And I got talking to one of the stewards uh, the next day, and uh, he sort of gave me a few tips and said, "Well, you should buy a CB radio." So we legged it back to Wendover, bought a CB radio, managed to blag some uh, passes and some high vis vests. And the next morning, about six o'clock. We just drove straight past the uh, no entry sign and uh, legged it down the uh, safety lane and uh, went for about a mile, mile and a half out of the way of the officials. And that's where we sort of parked up and, uh, we, and listened to the, uh, our, our CB radio, which was tuned into the uh, race commentary. So we had a pretty good idea of what was about to hurtle our way. And I, me I, remember, it, I remember when I say hurtle, I mean, these cars were going down like a slice of, slice of light, like a glint, like a, a coin bank flicks across the ice. Um, so as soon as they, somebody shot by, we would, uh, Jules would hit the throttle and we'd sort of belt after them in our, in our Jeep. And after uh, they'd run at different stages, they do sort of like two, three, four mile runs. As they would sort of come off, they slow down and almost kill their engine and just peter out and then sort of come round and turn and get, on, get onto the safety lane. And as they were there, we, you know, we would be there for them. Um, and I would jump out far at the camera and just with a cursory glance just to check it was okay to shoot. And that's where we created these, these images, these portraits. It's a bit like the surfers, you know, it's, it's important to photograph people who have just done something they love or exerted themselves or like photo photographing footballers. It would be, it's far more interesting to photograph them after they had a, you know, a hell of a bitch of a game, ideally in the rain and snow, um, maybe with a few cuts. You know, it's, it, it's just far more interesting to me that way rather than shooting something really placid. We had to uh, work fast, though, when we were there because their support crews would be trundling down after, the, you know, after them to sort of pick them up and the moment would be gone uh, because the first thing they would say is how fast and uh, when can we go again, you know, do we beat the record? Uh, so uh, that's a little bit about that. Um, it was just amazing being alone, alone with these drivers. I think Bert Munro said, uh, I think you live 
um, more in five minutes on a flat out on a bike like this, I should say, maybe we should flip back to that one, than some people do in a lifetime. Uh, this is a, a portrait of uh, Jeff Brock, who, uh, thank, you, that, thank you, that name kept back to my head, who is a, a, a just fantastic character. I mean, me, meeting him was, uh, it was, it was just amazing. Um, he's actually a jeweler by trade, and uh, this is his, one of his jewels. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, this car actually can go on the road as well. I mean, I've seen pictures on Facebook of him just going out for the evening in that. I, th I, think, I think having a camera in, a hand, in your hand is it's almost like having a, a magical key. I think when, when you've got that, it, it means that you, you're no longer a spectator. You know, you can go, it forces you. You have to take part and immerse yourself in. And generally, touch wood, uh, it's been a, a pleasurable experience um, going that little bit further. I think we've got about, uh, after all the shots I did there, I think I've got a series of about 60 images that I'm really happy with. And I'm going to look into uh, producing a book. And uh, it's almost like Shiraz and a book and uh, hopefully have an exhibition, which would be probably one of my first. Because these, these images I'm really pleased with. Sorry, I should go probably a bit, I'm not very good at flicking through, am I? Th this, uh, th this is sort of like a landscape portrait. This is. Some of the people are fans and they come and stay the, the, for the whole of Speed Week and some people make their own little rigs that they uh, hook up to their, to their cars and uh, they hunker down at night. And this is a shot or portrait of this chap just drinking his morning coffee about 6 a.m. This next group of images or series uh, are about um, skaters in uh, Salt Lake City. So after leaving Bonneville, uh, we had a few more days before we had to fly home um, to the bloody awful weather we have here. And um, I I'd wanted to photograph skaters for quite a while and uh, had done it a couple of times in, in London or in the UK. But, but I, I really wanted uh, an essence of uh, Dogtown where uh, it's bright, hot sunlight, where the kids are... Uh, Draining, draining pools and skating for their lives and uh, being chased by cops. And uh, I don't think I was going to find that in the UK. And uh, I think we, when we got back to Salt Lake City, I think I got up in the morning and Googled skate parks and I found there was about 50 skate parks in the, in the Salt Lake City area. And I thought, oh, let's go and, let's go and check that out. And uh, I think we loaded up on Starbucks and went to the first one we had earmarked. And it actually, it was a bit disappointing because it was just one kid skating it and he, he was a bit... I could probably skate as good as him, um, but uh, for, fortunately, um, we, you know, I took a few snaps and spent some time there, and I came across this older dad skater, a bit like me, um, called Ted Condy, and got chatting to him about uh, Tony Alva and skating, and uh, I uh, said, you know, I'm looking for a really good park to uh, photograph some a real hardcore group of skaters, and said, well, well. I could take you to Fairmont. So we went down and checked it out, and uh, it was flipping perfect. It had several deep bowls and uh, waves of concrete and, uh, and a fantastic street skating area. So it was, it was perfect. So um, I think we rocked up there the next, next afternoon and saw all these kids there, and I was a bit, a bit nervous to, be, to begin with because uh, you know, I'm wandering in with this uh, expensive camera, and I think I'm just going to get, I'm just gonna get ripped off here. But so I started taking pictures just from the edge, and, and I think some of the kids had brought up a, like a, a little lightweight uh, seating area. You might find it at sort of kids' school ground. And a lot of people were start hanging out there, putting bags there. And uh, so I sat right next to them and uh, still clicking off the old picture and then turning, taking pictures. So just making people that aware that I was there taking pictures and that I couldn't help myself. Before long, I was actually in the park shooting freely, just making sure that I wasn't in their way, so I wasn't going to get duffed up and said split, or you know, getting a board in the head. So, uh, so that, 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 was, uh, that was it. I mean, I, I, um, this park and the whole area, it couldn't, it couldn't have been a better place, really, because uh, they, all these, these kids were tooled up, and they were drinking liquor, and 
they were getting broken bones and smashed teeth. It was, it was just perfect. It was almost like lighting a, a you know, basically dropping a lit match into a box of fireworks. The so things were happening spontaneously all the time. And uh, it was just great to photograph real things. And I should move on again. Uh, real, real uh, you know, capturing real moments. You know, things won't necessarily um, happen again. I couldn't have, couldn't have found a better bunch of, uh, bunch of kids really to photograph. Uh, th this guy was uh, f f fantastic. He was there with his girlfriend, and uh, if I skip forward a little bit, you'll see uh, a, a shot of uh, his girlfriend just, just basically just showing um, an outpouring of emotion, and that's really what I'm trying to capture. I really like these pictures because they're, they're, they're effortless, unstaged, unscripted, and that's what I'm really digging at the moment. Less is more, you know. That's it. This is a, a quick uh, portrait. The split second portraits, really. Um, this is Adam Diet, who's a, a professional skateboarder. He turned up for about 20 minutes with his daughter, skated, and uh, showed everybody else how to do it. And he gave me a couple of seconds. Again, this couple. I, mean, I just really like the the. God, the honesty, or you know, the fact that you can see the, you know, the the, trans, the, the, the spittle in there on there, you know, it's just great. So these next next uh, images are more, more along that theme, I suppose, of um, snapshot. It's uh, less is more. I'm sort of at the moment really enjoying the sort of freedom uh, you can get by uh, just it's just you and a camera. Um, I keep thinking of, uh, I just remember watching Mario Sorrenti actually shooting uh, a Pirelli camera and just thinking, my God, he's got the best job in the world. And, it's, and I was just watching him with a camera. He had lots of kit, but it wasn't, it was, it wasn't, he wasn't using any of it. Um, just him photographing beautiful girls in, in, beautiful, in the right time of the day in beautiful light. And I think he's doing the right thing. Um, you know, I've got no assistance, no lighting, no styling. No hair and makeup. Th this uh, chap, uh, this portrait, which I particularly like, um, was shot uh, at the end of an afternoon. I was shooting a, a group of uh, friends uh, who we'd met. And uh, I sort of really had earmarked him. I just really wanted to get a picture of him because he's like uber cool guy. And uh, managed to get this portrait of him right to the end of the end of the day i think we had the car door open the music going and a few sparks and stuff and you know i just think it really represents him where he's at at that time uh you know it can't be replicated again that's that's a moment this girl that i shot i sort of went to a festival again with the cameras like unlocking the door you've got to go in and, and immerse yourself into what is actually going on you've got to be prepared to uh really get in it and uh, and get and get people's trust don't you know i'm not trying to uh, take a picture and then run away i I'm, I'm, I'm what i want to embrace the fact that she's having a great time particularly like you know like this picture like her like her spirit like the light again this is a just a simple portrait i was shooting uh, some friends playing bike polo and I, I just think i just caught this guy and he's with his his mates He's used to doing this sport, and uh, he's in a warm environment. And uh, the look on his face, he's having the best time. The whole, the, the day's of worry has gone, gone behind him. He's there living. This couple, I, this portrait, is more of an, quite an intimate portrait um, of this couple. I, I'd uh, photographed them earlier in the day. This was shot at a festival. So they knew that I was wandering around taking pictures. and. Uh, so they, they sort of didn't mind me uh, taking pictures. And uh, so I got this uh, interesting portrait. I mean, when I was there, I, uh, I would get there quite early. And um, if there were any sort of uh, noises coming from tents uh, early in the morning, I would, if there was like a little chink in the tent, I would almost, well, I was, not almost. I was uh, going in with my camera first and uh, shooting. I was shooting with a camera with a pretty fast shutter speed. And uh, it, <laughs> fortunately, I didn't get beaten up. But, but it was amazing some of the sights I saw, and uh, you know, couples, different. You know, yeah, I, I can't, I can't say much about that. <laughs> um, 
This is a, a picture of a model, uh, Claudia. I just wanted to show that models still can do it, give a, a, a true, honest performance. Uh, really enjoyed photographing her. Uh, she, she wanted to do the best, uh, to get the best picture. And I, I think we really captured something special there. And similarly, this, I just wanted to create, try and create uh, images that uh, are current and contemporary. I don't want to do things which are staged, old fashioned. Um, Beck again doing doing uh, doing a thing. This uh, picture of Roxy, uh, I, I did a sort of a shoot with uh, people running around uh, without any clothes on, probably thinking about Roger Watt back at Men Only, and um, I think all of us by the end of the day were running feral, and uh, there was this sort of slow moving river going through this uh, place, and we we all just took our clothes off, jumped in, had an underwater camera. And again, it, ca it captures a moment, uh, a split-second portrait, but it, it's, it, it's, it's not my view of her, that is her. That's, it's, 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 um, I'm not uh, angling for this. Maybe a little bit, the old squeeze now and again, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's an honest uh, approach. And then the last couple of images I'd like to talk about is uh, basically just saying that you don't necessarily have to have uh, an expensive camera to take uh, an interesting portrait. Uh, this is uh, my son Jet on his Damien Hirst uh, bouncer. And this is uh, Coco on one of our favourite beaches. Again, it's about this trying to capture this outpouring of emotion. You, you know, that can't be repeated. I've, in, I've included this uh, portrait of uh, Patrick Burnett and his son. Um, I spent uh, a couple of days with him. We, we were, we actually, I've just made a short film about him. And uh, he, it's about him and his family. And, and he makes these incredible, lightweight, hollow wooden surfboards from a sustainable source. And what makes him interesting is uh, he, he surfs these boards himself. He, he'll, take, he'll go off surfing in the evening and uh, say goodbye to his family and, and take his life into his own hands and uh, not necessarily come back. He's, he's driven. He's, he, 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 to see him, he, he, he looks quite um, meek, really. And, uh, but he is a very, very strong person. We, uh, we shot some footage of him actually going surfing, and I surf. Uh, and I was tempted to go in, um, but I, was a, a, you know, I knew how big those waves were. And it, it wasn't like exactly going off, but it was. There were good, like six to eight foot faces, you know, paddling out over, going, climbing down over rocks and paddling through kelp and getting a decent way out. And uh, he's unstoppable. You know, you, you know, his time was there to surf, and you know, you'd have to shoot him. Like he's getting his wetsuit on. You, you couldn't stage it. So, go, oh, you know, Patrick, would you mind doing that? And uh, you have to shoot what's happening in front of you. So, yeah, he was he was great, and that's being edited right now, and hopefully, will be uh, finished soon. And, going to try and enter it for the uh, London Surf Film Festival and the one in New York. This is a quick snap again on my phone of uh, our daughter Coco. Another bloody surfer. But I just, I just really like the flair and stuff, the feeling. And uh, the, la the last one, this is a cab our cab driver in New York I met. I wanted to take a picture of him and uh, he delivered. Uh, it's, it, you know, this is him. This is, you know, it's, he's an unstoppable force. He, he, it was great. So uh, that's uh, basically the end of my talk. I would like to thank Gemma for teasing me out and uh, getting me to do this. I can now uh, drink and get pissed. Um, and thank you very much for all of you for listening and not leaving. Uh, thank you. That's it.